Hey, welcome to Forest County Outback number eight. Today we're on the upper reaches of Salmon Creek doing some sawmill hunting. We're looking for Bauman and Sutton sawmill and the Campbell and Ritz. There's something I wanted to mention about these videos. I had done Facebook videos on these mills before and I was going to use reuse them but I've decided I'm not going to use a any of the Facebook videos I'm going to reshoot them all and with better camera fresh eyes and some more knowledge so what you're going to see going forward is a mix of some some old stuff that was originally on Facebook it's been updated and some brand new content and so that's where we're going with this from here on out So this is the boiler house of the Bauman and Sutton sawmill. This was a partnership of John and George Bauman and Elmer and Larry Sutton. It was formed in 1906. They purchased several tracts of timber here along Salmon Creek and they ran a uh, 36 inch gauge railroad side railroad from what was in the B and O Railroad in Marionville down here. <clears throat> then in 1907, they contracted to sell the output of their mill to the Pennsylvania Lumber Company, which was a lumber wholesaler set up by Teddy Collins. Now Collins bought some acreage next to the mill to store the lumber until it was sold. Well, the first locomotive was a Class A Climax, it was 8 ton, it was called the Gold Bug. They bought that from Teddy Collins, he had used that on Fool's Creek. What they found out was that the, the locomotive was not heavy enough to pull loaded cars up out of this valley. So what they would do is take partial cars up, park them up there, then they had to come back and get another half load and they kept, they kept handling lumber. So eventually they bought a uh, used 18-ton shea and the gold bug was relegated to the log train because it was a downhill uh, run to bring logs into here. And this mill, mill ran until 1911 when all the timber was cut. thing I noticed about this boiler house was the size of the stone and the quality of the workmanship. Usually the stones were much smaller than this. Now this is where the railroad grade came down behind the mill. Now this area here I think is where the mill was located. 
It's next to the boiler, nice big flat area. And it's adjacent to the log pond. You see how this is dug out here? And there used to be a square timber laying down here. Uh, it was very badly deteriorated. It might be gone by now. Take a look, see if I can find it. Okay, so this is that square timber. When I first saw it two years ago, you could tell it was a square timber. It has really deteriorated now. In a couple years, there won't be anything left of it. Okay, I think that there was a dam across here as the edge of the log pond comes down and it angles over. And it angles right towards this, this flat area here. And that is just so unusual to have that kind of a flat. I don't see any timbers or anything, but just I think there was a dam across here for the log pond. This is, I think, an interesting feature right in front of the boiler house, or, yeah, I guess the front of it, is this drainage ditch that goes into the log pond. As you can see, Dynasty Creek is not the only place with a frog rock. This area behind us here, this flat area, that was where Collins had his uh, storage yard for the lumber he bought from Bauman and Sutton. And we know that because when, they, when the oil company put this bridge in, they were finding some, uh, some odd shaped spikes. And I've been trying to get one, I've, I haven't managed to yet. But the poor service archaeologist told them that this is where, where the yard was. So. We're, we're at the site of the Campbell and Ritz sawmill. And when I was doing the Facebook videos, this proved to be a moving target for me. I had a map and a description that was, uh, that was modern, and it had me looking for the for location about two miles upstream from here and I actually made two trips out here stomping around the bottomlands trying to find something and I had given up and then I came across a, a vintage map and it had a different location for it I come out here using that map and it was spot on I walked right to it so having uh, having good information is important
So let's go see what we've got here. Okay, this is a railroad grade railroad siding that came into the mill site here. Now this was a partnership of Joseph Campbell and Cornelius Amsler. Now they bought the Harmer Estate lands in 1890. And they had a lot of problems right from the get-go. One was the estate wanted $10,000 cash, which was a huge sum at that time. They didn't have it. So Amsler wrote a check to cover it and then got on his horse and beat feet to St. Petersburg to his bank and talked to his banker down there who was willing to cover it for an interest in the business. So that, that's how it became uh, Campbell and Ritz. Ritz was the name of the banker. So in 1890, they per yeah they purchased the uh, the timber, and they ran a two and a half mile branch from what was then the Pittsburgh and Western near Marionville. Uh, P and W had a policy of any mills like this; they had to send their own locomotives to pick up uh, the loaded cars. Now they only had rod locomotives, so. They had built a branch with the idea of a geared locomotive. The P and W rejected it, so they had to scramble and rebuild part of the branch. In the meantime, they were sawing lumber. They couldn't get it out. Their bank account was empty. They were on the verge of foreclosure, and they got this, got the, rebuilt the siding and got approval just in time, uh, you know, to save the company. And shortly after that, they had a an accident where they were a crew was wildcatting empties down into the mill, and they lost control. Everybody jumped off except the one brakeman named James Pierce, who fell under the cars and was crushed. So there's very little sign of this. Uh, if you didn't know what you were to look for, this you would probably walk right by it. So we're going to look around a little bit more. There's a few other things here. Okay. Now granted the evidence for this is pretty thin because we don't have the smoking gun, the boiler house. But I think it might still be here in a different form. That area of riprap, it looks like there's some cut stone in there and there was a ccc camp just up the road so i could see them you know picking up that stone and using it now they had all kind of problems with this uh with this operation they uh, had trouble getting the pittsburgh and western down here to switch switch cars at the mill so they bought a small shea from the iron city lumber company which was going out of business at that time to do their own switching in uh, August in 1894, the mill burned and destroyed 3 million feet of lumber, finished lumber. And in April 96, the engine house burned and damaged the locomotive. In 1897, they, the timber, they were done cutting timber, so they closed down at that point and the company dissolved. However, Campbell and Amsler formed a new partnership and they bought timber in the Lolita area and built a mill and town over there. So that's the story of Campbell and Ritz. So. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, like it, subscribe, uh, comments, and We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Hey, welcome to Forest County Outback number eight. Today, we're sawmill hunting on Simp. <laughs> okay. <coughs> yeah, don't, don't bother. I'll edit out the bad parts. Yeah. Something I wanted to mention about these videos 
I've done, I was at these mills, I did videos for the for my Facebook. Oh, started yet. Okay. 